Uh, we're going to see something about OpenShift pipelines today, which is a tecton upstream project of that. So we'll see what it has in store for us. So why we need? Uh, obviously, people will understand that they have been using, using Jenkins for quite a long time. Uh, but there are few things with Jenkins. Uh, Jenkins is a great tool, uh, obviously, but it has, it's not made for containers, right? It's not ready for container world where we are right now doing. And also, like, it also needs a lot of attention from the operators or the call to the build guys to keep watching that, what's happening there, whether I need to add extra things or something like that. That's required as well. And also, like, it also quickly becomes an overhead, right? Because if you have so many jobs running, then it will start to consume a lot and lots of resources, and it will be start to, the builds will start to get very slow as well. And typically, if you imagine, if you're running a container native applications where you want to build and deploy Kubernetes applications, your container images, then it becomes really brittle, little more brittle, and the configuration becomes much more complex, right? I have to add all those kind of plugins. That's what we call as plugins mania, because I have to keep adding lots and lots of plugins on top of that. And finally, like, you might have your own experience with Jenkins as well. So uh, it's a great tool. It was a great tool, and probably it needs to move to the container native way. That's what we are going to do with uh, OpenShift pipelines. So OpenShift pipelines, what you have is that we have these three basic silos over which it's going to run. It's going to be containers. So everything is going to be container. I'll show you task examples, uh, pipeline examples as well. The files are traditionally is going to be the same YAMLs, which are going to write. Since you have got introduced to CRDs, it's another CRD you're going to see right now. It's all containers. It's going to be serverless. What I mean to say is that when a pipeline is run, once a pipeline is done, the service is going to come down which means that every pipeline runs going to start your server, execute your build, and come down, all right? And then it's typically fitted for DevOps because it's designed for microservices because it's containers, cloud native, which means that it's designed for DevOps. So what all it has, right? So it has standard Kubernetes pipelines, I said earlier, the CRCDs based on Tecton, and then it runs pipelines in containers. Each pipeline step will have a container. We'll, we will inspect that when you're running the containers as well. And it has a powerful command line tool called as TKN or Tecton CLI. The Tecton CLI will basically helps you to kind of see the logs, see the task, how the pipeline is running, whether it's failed, any configuration problems. We can debug everything there. It can build images with Kubernetes tools. For example, right, typically if you heard of tools like Builda, Kaneko, Jib, and then we also have other tools like Podman. This doesn't require Docker daemon anymore. So what we basically do is that we build the images using CRIO. How many of you heard of CRIO? Container Runtime Interface. So it follows the Container Runtime Interface and Container Runtime Image Specifications so that you, the builds are, images are built and run using those images as well, using the specifications. I think obviously OpenShift 4 no longer uses Docker. OpenShift 4 uses CRIO behind the scene, right? And then it can be deployed into multiple platforms um, and then it can be have virtual machines, serverless, et cetera, et cetera. It can be very easy to run. And finally, it gives you an integrated CI CD experience um, with a lot of plugins. As of today, like as of today, we don't have a dashboard on OpenShift for Tecton, but soon in 4.2 release and above, we should soon be getting a, a Tecton pipelines dashboard as well. On. So what does it has to do? So this is what an intro about Tecton. It's an open source project providing a set of shared and standard components for building Kubernetes style CI CD systems. All right, which is done by CD Foundation, uh, which has contributions from Google, Red Hat. CloudBees, the, the Jenkins guys, the IBM, Pivotal, and many more people, right? Great. So what are the concepts behind these things, right? So this is what we're going to see now, and I'll show you the examples of each one of these things. The first one is that step is something which is very the smallest unit of thing that you do, right? The task that you do within a build, right? The build, let's say, for example, I want to check, check out a source from GitHub. So that's going to be one step. And let's say if I'm a Maven user, I'm a Java user, then I'm using, going to use Maven build to do build the application. That's going to be another step. Once I build the application, I want to convert that into a, what I call a, a container image, right? That's going to be the next second, third step. And also like once a container image is done, I want to push this container image into a Docker registry or a container registry, what we call. So that's going to be the third or fourth step, right? These are the individual step that compiles of what is called as task, right? In task, what I do, I have these steps sequentially done lined up and they get executed sequentially within a container. Once all these steps are completed, the tasks deemed to be completed, all right? And pipelines is nothing but a pipeline is composite of multiple tasks, like Wahoo step has multiple, all tasks has multiple steps, pipeline has multiple tasks as well, right? I say task one, task two, task three, makes one pipeline, all right? And pipeline resource, for example, each of these tasks or a step or, or, or even a pipeline 
each of them expects some input and output parameters, right? I need to send some input, okay, for example, I need to say where is your GitHub resource, right, for a GitHub project, right, that would be one resource. What should be the end I'm imagining, for example, docker.io slash something slash something slash something, right? So you give a fully qualified container image name, we need to tell that what should be your image name, that could be one resource. And then probably you have one repository, uh, one repository or one version for development and one for QA, one for production. It'll be keep changing all these things. So we need to have something called as pipeline resources, which helps you to plug these things based on your pipeline runs. Okay, I can change, okay, for this I use this pipeline resource, for this I use this pipeline resource. It get matched so that your step, task and pipeline are very generic. So they are not tied to one specific application built or something. If you have a common pattern of building, then I can write the steps and I can use it with any other type of application, just change the parameters. We'll see the exactly the same way how I'm going to do the build. You'll see that I'm using, I'm going to use the same pipeline, same task, but I'll just change the parameters and the repositories. It's going to give you a different output as such, all right? And all, we, all these are static resources, I mean to say like I, I, when I create step, task, pipeline or pipeline resource, basically what happens is that I just have them there. There will be no reactions within the system, there will be no pods created, nothing will be running inside this, right? I need to have a way by which I need to run the tasks, okay? I can run the task individually or also as part of the pipelines. So that's what we do with task run and pipeline. The pipeline run and task run, basically what it takes, it takes your task to run or it runs your pipelines as well, okay? That's going to be a bunch of series of steps that's going to be executed with a success or failure result at the end of the time, all right? Great, so what else we have? So uh, we'll see about that in example, I'll explain that as part of the CRD. This we talked about task, and then it talks about pipeline, combines multiple tasks, express tasks in order, has inputs and outputs parameters, links tasks to input, like one input from one, one pipeline step could be an input to another one, you can just carry it over, and then you can run in different nodes, right? Basically, it gets distributed as well. So pipeline resource, we talked about these things as well. Task run and pipeline run, and task and file catalog, for example, you'll also be using catalog here, is that reusable tasks which can be defined and available. I just need to run OC commands or kubectl commands to get install those tasks. Once the tasks are inside, then let's start running the pipelines again, all right? So what I'll do is like I'll stop my talking. Um, probably I'll just show you uh, one little thing how the might be the dashboard looks like. This is something which might be, this is not, it's a premature image. But end of the day, you'll see something like this on a dashboard on OpenShift soon. So where you can also start, stop the pipelines from OpenShift itself. Right now we do it with Jenkins. Uh, you can also do it with uh, Tekton pipelines soon. From 4.2, that's expected. But anyways, you just watch out for the news to see what happens with that, right? So I'll, I'll stop the talk. Maybe I want to show you more than talking. Uh, so let's get into a demo. All right, so let me go here and then stop these guys. Just save some shifting of uh, things, and this is KNA tutorial, I'll close this as well. So just let this be there, and then uh, let me go here, and then I'll say, we we'll see project, I'll change the project. Right. So let's go to the, uh, the console first, I'll show you these projects. I'll just close the unnecessary windows for a second. Uh, da, 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 it's a tutorial, I don't need. I don't need this, I don't need this. I don't need this. I have a lot of tabs open. I'll just close this one. Okay, I just start with Tekton. So where I can find the Tekton CD GitHub repository is here. Uh, you can just go to github.com Tekton CD uh, and then you have this here, right here, right? You can just go there, I can just download Tekton. I think the CLI is from there. You can just download the CLI from there. Um, and then uh, Tekton CD, uh, the project is hosted here, tekton.dev. So that's where it is hosted. You can go to tekton.dev kind of to get this project in and then it leads you to the GitHub repository as well. And then what also we'll see is like, I'm just going to open up uh, something new for us. So that that developer demos. I have a small pipeline catalog for this demonstration. So that is what it's here. I'm just only showing you this, this pipeline catalogs here. So you can go to Red Hat Developer Demos, you'll find a pipeline catalog here. Uh, and the demo sources, uh, which I'm going to run, the sample applications, uh, they are right in this place, uh, called as tutorial pipelines. So this is the demo which I have here. You can just go here to the demo. 
if you want to pull these demo resources. Anyways, I'll, I'll, ask, the, I'll ask the people to send you all these links uh, so that they can have the look at that. This is the place where you can download the demos which I'm going to run right now, the sites there. Uh, let's do this. So let's see what are tasks, right? The first one, what I'm going to show you is that, let's go to my, this is the offline repository of that. I'm going to show you a Quarkus talk, probably since you had been in Quarkus talk since today morning. What I'm going to show you is that uh, it's a Quarkus task that builds your JVM thing, right? Just a JVM type of Quarkus thing, uh, application, all right? The first one, uh, as usual, we have the CRD. So this is from tecton.dev and then this is, this is of kind called as task. This is something which you have to write. I give a name called as Quarkus JVM. I'll come back to this name where we use this. And then we start something with inputs. We need to say like what the task takes inside, right? What I need, I, I need to give it to. The first one is, is a source. Uh, I call this a source. You can give any name you want, but the type is Git. What it means is that this particular type is type, type GitHub repository, which means that I can have a URL. I can have a revision, whichever revision or branch which you want to use, so that when I specify it there, it automatically goes there, right? I'll come back. You will see when we run the pipeline run, I'll show you how you actually map this. But in this case, what you find right now is this is very generic. This is not tied to any specific build. Okay, it just says it needs an input of type git, right? Which I need to map it to source. And then it takes a bunch of other parameters like any other application. I say I need a context DAR, where I need to shift and do, what should be your TLS verification done. The destination image name is nothing but what should be your final image name. I'll come back to that in a second when we see the pipeline resources and few other parameters which I have, which I take for this as input. What it actually gives, it produces an output which is of type image. The type image is nothing but your Linux container image. So I build the application, generate a jar. For example, let's say I run a Docker file or a Docker build, and then it gives me an image, and that's where I tag it to this image, right? This is with stuff type, container Linux container image. So basically what happens here, my Linux task gives you an input, my task, and then you get the parameters. Once I have parameters, I do the build and do everything. Once the build is done, I'm going to produce an output which is going to be of type the image, all right? And what are the steps involved? So basically this is inputs. I had inputs now, I had outputs now. Now I'm going to go for steps, right? What are the steps involved in this task? It's as good as any build, we'll have multiple steps. As we saw, task consists of multiple steps. I'm going to call this step as JVM build. I mean to say like it's going to produce me a jar end of the day. I'm going to use an image. This is my builder image. Right? This builder image has all the tools that is required for me. For example, a Maven and then Graal VM or maybe you, any of the other tools that you want, Golang, if you're a Golang developer, I have the Golang tools installed. If you're a .NET developer, you'll have all the .NET tools installed to build your application. Right? If you're a Python developer, I have Python tools. You can have all these kind of builder images created for you. I just say which image always. This image pull policy, because since you're doing a development or demo, whenever I change, I want it to be keep pulling. And then I set few environment variables. Basically saying like, okay, these are the environment variables which is understandable by my builder image. For example, in this case, I'm using a Maven mirror URL here because I want my builds to be faster. So I have a Maven repository set up. So I just point my build to use that repository, right? That's a, something like that. You can have things like that where you want to pull things from outside. For a Node.js, I want to have a local repository from where I can pull these things out, all right? And then it takes few arguments. I'm going to run a basically a script called as Maven run within that container image. And then I need a security context. And then I allocate some resources here. Like I say, this is going to be a build. It's going to be a little bit CPU consuming and memory consuming. I say that I have a maximum, give it maximum of 6 GB of RAM and 4 CPUs. And then it, a minimum I need 4 GB and 2 CPUs to run the build so that it runs in optimal speed. Okay, you can change these parameters as well. So this is my first step which I, where I'm building my JVM build. And the next step, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a container image build. So I'm going to use Builda in this case. Builda is a dockerless way of doing builds. I'm just going to use Builda to kind of build my application container, right? Which is going to produce you a Linux container image, right? From the previous steps. The only advantage with steps is that the data that's part of the previous step is shareable with the data in the next step, which means that it always has a folder called a slash workspace. So I can go find the files from the workspace that, that can be added into your Docker file, right? It'll have a file in the workspace, it'll check out all your source folders as well so that I can refer to my source files as well. For, for example, usually you check out your Docker file into a container, into GitHub repository. And once you check it to GitHub repository, when I clone it back, I know the path where I need to root, you have the Docker file. So I can start running the Docker file and use the workspace 
to kind of get the data for me, right? The build data, the artifacts. So that's what I'm going to do here. And once I do the build, the last part is that I'm going to use builder tool again to push the build image into a registry. If you're using OpenShift, in OpenShift we have an internal registry automatically. So I'm just going to push this image into OpenShift internal registry. All right. These are the three steps that I'm going to do as part of this particular task. So how do I refer this task? So let's see an example of referring this task. I'll go to, uh, you've seen this uh, customer preference recommendation example in the morning, people who are there as part of my Istio session. So we deploy the customer preference recommendation in the morning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same application, but I'm not going to run anything manually. I'm going to use pipeline runs to build, deploy customer preference and recommendation. In this case, I'm also going to make recommendation as serverless. Again, using pipelines, I'm not going to do any manual work here. All right. So let's see this. What, how, where do I use this? So let's, I have something common in place. Since I sold the tasks are, tasks are reusable, I have something called as a common pipeline defined here where I'm going to refer to the task. But before that, I also want to show you what is resources. We saw a few resources, right? I told about pipeline resources. In this case, uh, if people are aware of OpenShift, we have something called as image streams. If your people are new to OpenShift, you can just ignore the image streams here. What I'm also going to define is the first pipeline resource. I'm saying that it's tutorial Git. I'm giving it the name. And then I'm saying it's of type Git. And then I say, this is a URL from where you need to pull. And this is the revision which I need to use. All right. So this is of type git, which I'm defining. This is a pipeline resource. The type git is understandable by Tekton pipelines by default. It's one of the built-in uh, types which you can use. I say, okay, tutorials git is something which I need to use. Whenever I use this git, whenever I'm doing a cloning, go to this repository value given by URL and check out the version which is given in the version table, right? The revision one. That's what I'm doing there. Where I use this is here. Let me go and find this out and a pipeline run. I'll put it here. Um, when I say app git, I'm just referring this resource to tutorial git, right? Which I'm saying that, okay, this is an application git. When, where I need to use is resources. When I'm running a pipeline run, I say to the resources, use this particular app git, right? And similarly, I have an image defined in the same way. Uh, let me go to one of the image image. Uh, everything else pretty much the same. I have the image defined here. I say it's type image. And the URL is that image registry. This is the local registry I was talking to you about. Tutorial, customer, blah, 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 and V1, et cetera, et cetera. All right. <coughs> have do these things. And then I also I need to show you where exactly we map that in de pipeline deploy. So which is, it's just the name I've given to my pipeline deployment. I give it a name. Have a resource called as app git. That's what is mapped to resource tutorial git because from the pipeline run, I can change it, right? That's what I mean to say by pipeline resources. If you imagine that if I have put this particular resources here in, within your pipeline deployment, right, within your pipeline, what happens is that the, my pipeline is tied to this particular resource, all right? That's what Tekton tries to alleviate for you. In this case, what, what happens is that I'm not tied to any resources here. Only my pipeline run is tied to the resources because when I run, I know which resources I need to use, what should be my output image, what all the parameters I need to pass, that's when, that happens only when I'm running it, not when I'm defining it, right? During the declarative state, I just say, okay, I use this hap git, I use this mnemonic, right? Or called as I can pseudo name or something like that. And then I refer the pseudo name back in my resources saying that where I need to map. Let's say tomorrow I don't want to use tutorials git, I want to use my demo git, for example, right? I just go ahead, go to my pipeline run, change it. I don't need to change my deployment because it's already the pseudo name is mapped here. Right? It makes your life easier because you can change your resources or pipeline from QA to dev to dev to prod, anything kind of stuff, but you don't need to change your deploy HAML, right? It just need to be created once and your pipeline runs can give it whatever parameters it want to give. Make sense? All right. So it also has a task ref. This is where your task is referred. I have multiple tasks. As I said, pipeline has multiple tasks. When you say this is the build task, which I'm referring here, and then it refers to Corcus JVM. If you see that the same task, which you defined earlier. Right? I'm referring to the task, which means that this task will be used here, and then I'm passing some parameters to the task here. Say I'm saying the tail is verified, that's not required, some context DAR, some Maven Weaver here, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm also giving it resources and also giving it output as well. Right? This task, whatever the task inputs, output, and parameters is defined in the task def. I'm just passing them here. All right? Are you able to relate this? Any questions? Okay. 
Okay, I'm coming to that in a second. <laughs> All right. So what now happens is that so this now what and finally what I have multiple tasks I told there's one thing called as OpenShift client task, which means that I can run OpenShift client, OC client commands which you saw again. It's again an image which has this task built in. And then I'm trying to say that okay, roll out the latest deployment config, which means that I deploy, I create a deployment config without deploying getting triggered. The moment the build is complete, the image is pushed, OpenShift automatically starts doing the deployment. You'll see that when I run the build. All right. But what happens right now is there are something which I need to run in a privileged mode. And I need some cluster permissions to create few things. That's what your service account does. I have to say, okay, this particular service account has permissions to do A, B, C, D, E. I'll show you in an example what exactly it means. So we have to use service account always because there might be reason, for example, there might be reason I have to elevate my privileges. For example, I need to do in Linux, typically Linux you do sudo. Something like that, I want to uh, level up to a cluster admin and do something, or this guy has A, B, C, D permissions to do within the cluster. Okay? That's again a big difference between your upstream Kubernetes and what we have done on OpenShift. In OpenShift, we made sure that you have to have, since it's enterprise ready, we made sure that you need some permissions to do a few tasks. You can just like that, you cannot do whatever task you wish to do. Right? We want to restrict that. That's what the service account does. Okay? So how do you run it? Uh, let's run this example. We'll deploy customer application first. I'm going to follow the instructions just from here. So I'm already in the project. I created this service account called as pipeline, which I just created. And if you see this, these are some of the permissions which I'm giving to this pipeline. Okay? That's, that means that on this particular project, for this particular service account, I'm saying that it can have privileged rights, right? which means that it can alleviate to privileged privileges. It can have edit privileges. It can also run as a user with privileged user. Again, for the default, it's another service account. And any UID to another service account. I want to also start to run some uh, service account, Istio thing as well. I need to give those permissions as well. And then here, what I'm trying to do, I have a other set of pipeline roles. I'll come back to this, what roles it has. Let me go here and show you. When I do k-native uh, thing, I'll come back to this in a second. So this is something which we need to do, and then I bind this uh, namespace to this pipeline. So either you can use these kind of individual lines of defining permissions. These are all OpenShift open specific stuff, or what I can also do is like, let me go and see if I have this here, uh, k-native client. I can also define something like this as well. So this is a way to define the RBAC. In Kubernetes, I say, okay, on these API groups, I'm given a blanket permission here. I can do all these things, right? Which means I get, put, delete, whatever the verbs, it is acceptable by Kubernetes API. I can do all these things here. This is kind of creating a role. Instead of, see, this is one way of doing it. Like OAC, OC ADM policy, I can do one by one. Or I can also define at a bulk level, right? What all things I can do, okay? So this depends upon, see for example, like what I've done here is that when I deploy it as a K-native application, this particular pipeline service account should be able to know what is already deployed, get things from that, delete things from that, do all these things, right? So that's the reason why I given this pipeline role there. Okay? So you can, you can follow any, any one of these ways. Uh, it, actually, I, I prefer doing this way because it's much easier, it's declarative, you know what happens. At the first, pretty new to Kubernetes, this looks complex. But this is very nice thing which has happened there. Like it makes your life much easier, right? So I'm just doing that here, creating this and attaching to this particular namespace, okay? On this to this particular guy who needs the service account which has this thing. I have already deployed Nexus, and I also created the tasks uh, just to save time. Let's see what task we have. I told you this has a client. I have the client called as TKN. Uh, sorry, sorry about my typo. Version I'm just in 0.1.2. Probably it should have. Had Another new version released. So the first thing I'm going to say TKN and then let me enable the source completion. Source completion dot SH TKN tasks LS. When I give this, this gives me what all the tasks that I already have created, right? These are the task names. For example, if you see in my demo repository, I had all these tasks that I ran to create. I just use OC create command to create all these tasks. Okay, the pipeline client task, S2I Quarkus task, Quarkus native, Quarkus JVM, that's what we saw. And then Knative service create task, this is what we are going to use to create a serverless service. We'll see that I'm not going to deploy any YAML here, it's going to create your service automatically for you, right? 
I have all these tasks created already, so I am just going to go to the next step what I need to do. The first one is that I am going to create this application. I already have the resources created, let me check if I have the resources. I think I am just starting to create the resources as well right now. I create the image stream, the image, the GitHub repository, reference, everything, everything. So now I am not going to do OC create again. Now what I am going to do is like I am just going to create this pipeline first. This is not a pipeline run, it is just a pipeline, it is a definition of what my pipeline looks like. I am just going to deploy the pipeline, uh, sorry I missed the F here. I say I create a pipeline. Let us see if I have created the pipeline task pipeline ls all right i have a rs tutorial deploy pipeline created once i have the pipeline i also want to create the kn pipeline as well which is going to use a kn deploy it's similar to one only thing the last step changes to deploy as a serverless service i'm just going to do this as well let's go back and see we are good with two pipelines i have one pipeline which creates a normal openshift deployment another one which create a serverless deployment on openshift using k native okay so I uh, will come back to that pipeline definition in a second. So we are now good to do. What next we have to do is like I am just going to deploy our customer application, the exactly the same customer application which we saw today morning for customer preference recommendation. I am going to create the same one but in this case it is going to be built from sources. I am not going to use the image which already exists. So let us start the, let us deploy the application first. So I will show you this. I uh, will also do uh, one thing here, OC. Uh, watch OC get pods, right. If you see here, oh, I already have customer preference recommendation running here. Oh my God, I will delete them. Uh, okay. Apply customer clean, and then I also do preference clean. This is the residue from the morning demos. And then I also deploy recommendation. You can see, yes, even since I had two versions, right? I'll just do the V2 also. I'll give some time for that to clear off. And then let's do the app creation here. And then let me see which project I am in tutorial 3. Let me go back to tutorial. That is that, that is that. Okay. I'm getting back to this. So I do not have routes here uh, probably. So what I also do is like OC delete route, customer, right. So I do not have anything right now, I am just going to start from scratch. So I just create the app, app YAML. Now what happens is that it goes and creates a deployment config here called as customer. So I do not think so I have any deployments left over, all right. But we have 0 of 1 pods because I do not know what image is right now there. I tied to my image in OpenShift but I do not know what image is there because the image is not built yet, right? Because I am not referring to the external image. I want to build it from source via Tekton and then share that image to this so that it can start deploying it, all right? So what I do right now, go here. Let us see the instructions so that once you get back to these demos, you know what to do. I created the application. Now I am going to create a pipeline. Let, before I create this, I want to show you what this pipeline run has in it, right? So let us, let me put this here, go to customer and pipeline run. If you see here, I told you that pipeline run reuses pipeline but the parameters get changed, right? Because I am going to use the same pipeline deploy for customer preference recommendation for everything but only thing is that I am going to say you what, what deployment config you need to use what is the resource, tutorial resource you need to use. For example, for customer, I am using the same RST deploy here. Uh, let me take that thing for you on this side, uh, okay. So I am using the same RST deploy. You see this, I am referring to the same pipeline. If you compare the right and left, I am just using the same pipeline reference here. Once I do this, I say my deployment config name is customer. If you see in my example, go to the console. The deployment config name is customer. This is where it needs to update or trigger the deployment after the build is done. So that is what I am saying here. An application source directory is here. So what I go, let us go to the, where we have this, okay. So within this, I have a customer resource directory, right. In this tutorial sources, 
I am having the sources right here. So, I am just saying that go to this particular context AAR and start the build within that ok. That is what I am trying to say here and then trigger is manual which means that I do not have github pushes pull and then I am going to use the same service account here and then I am referring to the resources here right. Uh, probably these are the resources which you can have. Let me put the resources right below this so that it is easy for us to refer. I am saying that what resource I have. The first one I say tutorials git the same reference, reference which you had earlier tutorial pipelines repository version v1 that is what I am going to use here and then I am saying that customer open shift image what the customer open shift image has uh, ta, 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 where is that uh, ok this is a customer open shift image and then I am saying that go to the internal registry tutorial is a sample namespace within that pull the customer v1. So, this is what is going to be the end of the thing right you have tied up everything right now and one little thing to note about this is that will be seen if you have seen from since today morning whenever I create any Kubernetes resource for example, when I create this Kubernetes resource the name gets unique right. Next time when I again do a create what happens it say the name already exists right it will not create a pro object for you. So, what to do this pipeline runs can be run any number of times right it is not just one single run. So, for that what you have done is that in here I use a generated name in generated name what they basically tell you is that ok start something with the prefix customer pipeline and generate some random characters and append to it right. You will see that in example it is just like your pod id right it gets attached to it. So, that every new run has its own unique name. So, I can go back and see the logs if something has failed in the previous run or something I need to go refer to the old logs I can go and refer to the old logs as well ok. So, that is what I am going to do now let us go and create this pipeline run. So, we see this txptpt something. So, this is what something we can do and how do I see my logs? Here comes our tkn tool tkn pr is, PR is pipeline run shortcut of pipeline run follow from all containers if you see there are 8 containers here which means that there is 8 steps in this I will show you the step names in a second. I say follow this step on all containers so that all container logs are then from where from ok what did I do wrong? TKN ok sorry TKN PR logs alright and then I say follow the logs it keeps following the log. Uh, meanwhile we can also see the name uh, of these things uh, dot spec ok I will just go here and then change this to I am just pulling this from my docker repository local nexus repository. So, that I it comes from my tutorial pipeline repository as well that is that is the parameter which you already passed. I am going to give this name here so what happened the name is wrong get pods ok dot spec of containers dot sar dot name I am just getting only the names of the containers is something wrong here. Mm, this is splat right con c o n t a i n e or this is anything wrong ok. We see get pods this is something which is ok let us see if we can get this from the build pod here uh, go to resources pods there is a build pod which is running here this this the one no all right I think I did this yesterday just wondering what is wrong with this OC pods ok the build is successful the deployment is created right now, but we can still see the name I will show you the name what names it says because since it is a big name. I have to go all the way here get pods iphone o yaml why use a tool to read the yaml I got everything here and then I say I need the path spec dot containers all containers and just give me the names alone right all right I do not know what wrong it is did. So, if you see this we had multiple steps you have seen the steps like from the task JVM build, build, push all these things each of these tasks the steps within the task gets its own containers from where within run because that is the reason why we give an image name 
it starts the container within this own pod and it suffixes a name something like build step. In this way you know okay these are the part of this particular build step for which this container belongs to right. So that you can go and even check the logs but the TKN logs does the task for us because it gives the consolidated logs from all the containers. That is the reason we gave TKN logs PR dash F is for follow dash A is for all the containers right. So that you do not need to go into each these individual containers here right. Okay, let us do this okay we have done this one and let us go and see what we have here. Uh, we got the pods running right now the customer pod is running and then deployment configs when you go here it has one of one pods I have not created service in the morning if you see the example I did OC create deployment OC create service I have not done any of these things I just create the deployment config which is open specific stuff and then if you also see the routes got created I have a new URL also to access this. And then I can go here and you will get the same response back because we do not have preference yet right. We are not the exactly the same response we got today morning when you deployed customer alone all right. So, let us do the preference deployment also now. So, let us go here and I also wanted to do one thing before that uh, let me have this command handy ok I will just paste it here. So, because it is a pretty long command. And then what I am going to do here is uh, OC create dash F preference all right. Now, you see that I am not doing preference pipeline creation here because I am reusing the pipelines again. If I go to pipeline run of preference here let us open that as well uh, preference pipeline run on preference it is exactly same RST deploy right. But the thing is that I am changing the parameters here right I am making to use preference folder to go do the build and using the preference deployment config to do the config again all right. So, what I need to do basically here first create the deployment config as we did last time preference app dot yaml I create this if you go back to the console you will see that there is one more deployment config called as preference created here all right. But again 0 of 1 pods because we do not have the pods yet. So, do that what I am going to do is like I just get OC create dash F preference preference pipeline run ok. The pipeline run of preference is started here let us go and see what is the pod name we have here uh, I will just control C watch get pods and then grep I say pref so that I get only the preference pods here I get this big pod name it is getting initialized right now. Uh, I am not sure during initialization I can get the pod thing and I also have the pipeline references here. So, I say TKN PR logs if and if and a all right and then let us see if I can get all these container names now good. If you see the container names here it is exactly the same. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 right. It is no change nothing has changed here same containers same type of application deployment but only thing is that what I am building differs here. For example, I build a preference here not customer right. How did I change that that is using the parameters right. It is going to be the same repository you can even change the repository if you wish but in this case I kept it in the same repository. So, it is taking the same application now building preference application for me right now right. Once the deployment is done I think it is once it builds the image it deploys the image right now for you right. You can have the customer preference application rolled out right now. Today morning what we saw is that we did them individually I had the same qquotil commands repeated for all these tasks right now I am not doing this because tecton pipelines helps me to do the task much easily right. I point to the source repository tell it how to do build how to roll out a deployment I am done right I am push the image back. So, where do we see the images you go back to your tecton here you get bills image streams you get lot of image streams here for example, customer is here preference is here right. When you click on that you scroll down you see the image SHA also right preference is B3 something if you go here it has something like B3 CD 30 right this is exactly the same thing which got pushed there right internal registry right. Image stream is you can imagine like a view of your entire image and tags right just imagine like that so, I can use the image stream name instead of referring to multiple different repositories right. It is a kind of a view in what you call view in databases 
right, from multiple places you get one view. Similarly, you can have multiple uh, depositories giving one little thing called as customer in this case, okay. You can imagine image stream something like that. I have done this, my build is done, my preference is rolled out, okay, and you also see the preference application running for me here. When I go here and say this, I am going to get the next one which says my application is not available, recommendation, all right. Any questions until now? Because the next one what you are going to do is like we are going to use the same up, up like, up, I mean, technique or pattern, but I am going to do a K native serverless deployment of recommendation. Before that, any questions you have? No questions? Great. It's good or bad? The silence is dangerous thing, right? <laughs> because this guy is talking too much since morning, I am not able to understand anything, right? It could be either way. I, I take it as positively that you guys understand and you can reach out to me anytime you need a question. So what I am going to do next is I am going to show you what is K-Line, it is a similar one, same resources, but what I am going to do is I am going to do a K-Native deployment. So let me show you what I have here. The morning we saw we had two preferences, right, V1 and V2. And what I said in the morning is that in serverless, if I change anything, right, any parameters or image name or environment variables, it is going to start a new deployment, all right. Because it is factors, 12 factor application principles are followed, any change in a configuration is going to trigger a new revision, right. That is what I am going to do. I have V1 and V2 versions of this. What I am basically going to do in V1, for example, let us see the deploy first. What I have in my pipeline, K and deploy, I have sim similar thing, the gate resource, the app image. But what I am doing here is a service name. I am trying to give a service name here which needs to be created. And the source directory from here I have to build and create the service. Again, I am using Quarkus JVM here and all the same parameters. The only big change is that when I change this particular KN create service, right. KN is a Knative client. If you want to see, I am not showed you that. Knative, let me go there. Sorry. This is a Knative client, it is a command line client to create serverless applications using Knative, right. For example, you can go to this particular URL here, which is right there, Knative slash client. It is still under development, just got the 0 0.2 release happen. It tells you what all the things I have to do. There is an user guide which you can follow to create the Knative applications here. So I am going to just use this, I already packed it as part of my tools image. So I have the command available, I am just going to pass the necessary parameters to this command so that it creates my Knative service for me. Right. So that's what I'm. That's the only change. Uh, if you see the previous example, what we did, we did a OC rollout of a, or OC rollout deployment, a kubectl rollout deployment. But in this case, I'm just going to create a Knative service. That's the only big difference. Other than that, it's still going to do the same build, same deployment, same image push, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. And then, what's the difference between these two things? Uh, for example, I have a K KN pipeline run. The here is that I am going to use recommendation OpenShift image V1, right, I have two image versions. And then if you see the V2, I am just saying that I am going to use V2 version of the image, which means that to the Knative world, the serverless world, this is a config change. So I have to have two revisions basically created automatically for me. The moment I do the deployment, there will be two revisions created for me, all right. So let us do that. Uh, let us go here, see what instructions I have here. Uh, what is that? Okay. Preference recommendation. I'm going to say I'm going to take this version. So it's going to save you a couple of more commands. The mo the moment I create, this is created. Let's see the logs as usual. Tkn pr logs fna fna. Oh, sorry. All right, so this gives you only preference. Now I say give me only recommendation. All right, we have this. And then let me paste this here to see if I can get the same container names here as well. Unfortunately, I did not change the name push to k and create. So we will pretty much, right, you pretty much get the same thing. Step get JVM build, image exporter build, image exporter build, push, image digest, right? That's all I do. And it does the same build, same thing. You see this, everything is exactly same. The only thing you'll see at the last, let's do this. I'll say uh, watch 
oc get case vc we'll wait for this command to complete so we're going to see this and then this building the image right now for you and then the finally at the last is going to create you the k native service okay just watch the k native case vc command we just watch that as well all steps are exactly same which means that see the amount of reusability we are having here right so how much amount of things we are using the code that i'm right there might be some redundant thing which we need to write but that's okay compared to like we have to write completely new bills every time instead of that i'm reusing the task if you imagine in jenkins i cannot reuse the tasks right every time i have to create it's the same steps or i can copy paste we are very hardcore developer then you go into jenkins workspace get that xml out and then copy paste the same thing again right so that's all that's not required here i just go refer the same task name again and again and things happen smoothly for me right i just change the parameters it going to do the same build again all right so the image is pushed there you go now i have not got a oc deployment if you see the deployment is 0.3 here which means that this is not a normal deployment this is a k native deployment which is a k native serverless service which is deployed here and i also got this maybe i got the url now right to access the service let's click this url to see what happens there you go right we got this thing right now there for us recommendation v1 but let's try to tie it up like what we did today morning and there is a surprise for you there as well so let me do that uh, let me control c okay we'll wait for this to happen it probably takes some time to do initialization and then probably it breaks as well all right so was it get pause recognition so we see this after some time so the trick here is if you want to see only the running pods this is a trick to see the running pods okay i'll repeat the command again oc get pods or kubectl get pods and i use a field selector which says status dot face equal to running when i say this it will show you only the running pods right now it shows you all the pods completed terminated i'm not terminated but completed pods but sometimes you might need to filter out the pods to see which alone you need to have in this case running that's what i'm doing there i'm just going to say oc watch just running alone right we have customer preference and recommendation running here we'll allow this guy to terminate but now what happens when i go back to my oc uh tat tat i'm going to get another failure now still the recommendation is there but my application fails not able to reach recommendation okay it gives you some other like some disconnect reset headers etc okay i'll tell you why what happens in a knative serving is that every time i call a knative service by a new url it basically goes to a knative serving pod called as activator okay the activator checks for your host header to see what's the host header like in this case like something tutorial customer tutorial recommendation blah 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 and all these things right the moment it sees that then it says okay i have to activate the knative service which is dormant or which is available and then redirect to that particular stuff now what's happening is that that's there in knative serving namespace all right but what we have deployed is in tutorial namespace okay let's go back to my source when i see my source what happens is that where is preference it's java application property file but i've not had any tutorial suffix here right what basically have, what i'm trying to say here is i just have recommendation here so what it basically means is that it tries to go see the recommendation in the same namespace okay which is activator namespace i am not there right so you get some weird errors right i need to tell this explicitly to go and look up in the tutorial namespace how do i do that first we need to find the url for this so what you can do is like oc get case we see recommendation hyphen o yaml So you see two things here. This is a URL. Anything that is SVC dot cluster dot local means that with this within the particular cluster, right? That's what Kubernetes say. It, when Kubernetes sees Kubernetes DNS which is running inside, when it sees anything SVC dot cluster dot local, it tries to go and find it out inside the cluster, right? Inside the cluster, where I have to go, I have to go to a place called as tutorial, which is your namespace. That's where this particular service is inside. That's where recommendation reside, right? So what happens is that when you try to use only the short name like this, what basically happens is it understands that everything is within that particular same namespace which is calling, which are calling this particular service. 
and it finds out that it's not there, so it throws you some weird errors. All right, so let's go and update this. So now the question is, to do this update, I have this in my application properties, right? Exactly here. So do I need to do a new build? Hmm? Sorry? No, it doesn't do it automatically. There's a question for you since you watched since today morning. Kubernetes and all these again is basic fundamental Kubernetes thing. Do I need to do I need to do a deployment? Build again? No. No. Okay, I'll tell you why. So this is micro profile. Again, this is more Java centric, but just imagine that this is an environment variable. So if I do a config change, it has triggers an automatic redeployment. So what I'm going to do this, I'm going to take this environment variable. I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, put this here. I just need to do some capitalization for the normalization of this. And then I change this to this because environment variable does not accept dots. So I need to use this here. This is more Java centric, but don't worry, just imagine that this is an environment variable. And then I say the URL, right? To this URL, so what I go do is here, just copy this, go to your re preference, deployment configs. If you go to preference, there is something called as environment here, where all your environment variables are defined. Again, 12 factor cloud native application development. If I change any environment variable here, it triggers the deployment automatically. Because I don't want to change my image, I'm just adding on environment, environment variable to override that value. Okay, that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just going here and saying here, this recommendation URL is should be something like this. All right. And then I go save here. At the moment, let's watch the pods as well, all the running pods. We'll see this LSDH thing terminated soon. And let me save this. Hopefully, if all goes good, I should see a new deployment getting triggered here, right? Let's see here. You see this, the preference, new preference deployment getting happen here because this is more, it's again, it's Kubernetes feature as well. It's even OpenShift feature as well. In OpenShift, I'm just going and doing it in console. In Kubernetes, you just need to use a CLI to go and update this, okay? These are all sub additional things that Kubernetes OpenShift gives you on top of raw Kubernetes. So it's easy for the developers to go and adapt to Kubernetes, all right? Again, this one is specific if you are Java developers, you are interested to know what this is, just go to microprofile config. This is just for the Java developers. So if you go to microprofile config here on the GitHub page or in the microprofile config page, so you'll see everything here, whatever I've done here is exactly here. Like if this is just for an additional thing only for Java developers, if you want to go to microprofile config, you can go and find this here. All right, let's see what happens to my pod. My pod is up and running now. Let's see if I'm successful here. And we don't have recommendation running here as well because it's a serverless pod, it's terminated because it did not have request for quite long time. Let me go and refresh it here. If all goes well, let's see the recommendation coming up soon. Okay, let's see if I can do one more OC get pods dash W. There you go. All right. Now it's exactly the same thing which we did today morning, but today morning we ran it in a serviceful way. Now I felt that, okay, recommendation is required only when I call it, right? So I made it serverless. Now what happened, customer calls preference, those two are service, always standing services, and recommendation comes up only when I need it, all right? Okay, the next one, we just have six more minutes, I can show you one more stuff. What I want to do right now is I want to create another pipeline Okay, uh, KN pipeline V2 run. What I'm going to do is like I'm going to have another version of recommendation created. We had two versions of recommendation. I'm creating another version of recommendation. In this case, I'm not deploying two different deployments. Right, in the morning we did two different deployments. In this case, I'm leveraging on Knative feature where when I change the name, right, the image name, which is a new configuration, thereby as per Knative specification or thing, it has to create a new deployment again. Right? It still has old deployment, so we'll be basically having two revisions, okay? So what we do, I'll just start this up, all right? And then what I'll also do is like watch OC get 
revisions. I just have only one, you see this WBF8AJ that is the only revision we have right now. Once this pipeline gets completed, we will have one more revision up with the same URL, okay. There is no change in the URL because it is just another deployment that is going to happen, all right. So, TKN, PR, logs, FNF, FNA. Let us see what happens right now here. <coughs> Maybe we need to wait for some time for this to come and take the logs for me. So, this goes for the termination again because it does not require any more, all right. Okay, this is still in init state and then let us see OC get pods. Okay, so you got this thing running again for us. This is the V2 deployment and then soon if the V2 deployment is successful, then what right now happens to this like we will be having one more recommendation created. Like you can also try the native one if you are there on the Quarkus talk, there is a native task also available, but I prefer the JVM one because native task, each native task takes approximately 4 to 6, time, six minutes to complete because it needs to build the native image out of your jar, okay. So, I have this again pretty much the same step, let us wait for a few seconds like while it getting done if you have any questions I can take because we have just 5 minutes left. Any questions? Do you like this? Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, we are doing this. Let us wait for some more time. Sorry? Uh, I think for this I do not have probably I will try to update my GitHub repository with the diagram so that you know what how the pipeline actually works. I will do that no problem. Thank you. Do you mind opening an issue there so that I can I can dug. Hmm? All right, I have done this. This is creating another service. There you go, right. I got one more version created. This is a new deployment recommendation V2. Once again, I will just finish this demo and come back. I have done this. So, what we will also do is like let us try to do this. Uh, let us see. Uh, running pods, all running pods, uh, state uh, running, right. We have the new version running here as well, recommendation, new version of recommendation running. All right, uh, the deployment is still happening, it is taking some time for the deployment to complete. Uh, Let us go to poll. Right, when I do, when I start to do a poll, so, the other one also comes up soon on the polling, but what happens right now is when I do a polling, I will get only the W5K, I am not sure this is the latest one or the old one. Uh, it takes some time. Now, we see one V1, V1, V1 because as per the specification, only the latest one goes into picture, okay. Let us see what the other revision we have right there. Uh, recommendation, recommendation, okay, OC, get. Yes, we see. Again, it's still in V1. OC get revisions. I have V1 and V2 here. They both have same generation, and then let me do poll. I, ideally, I need to get the latest revision up here. Okay, I have not changed the V1, right? I'm not changed the Git repository. It's not V2. I just ran the same again, again. It's deployed a new revision but still printing the V1 from the old one, okay. I have, but the end of the day, if you see you have two revisions, in this way I can do, I can change any application is running as serviceful to serverless way as well, right. Uh, I think that is pretty much I have, uh, probably I can update the diagrams as you asked for. So, uh, any other questions I can take, otherwise I would say a big thank you for you all.